Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, when I put in the videotape, which I just realized I actually have not done, <laughs> 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 or maybe I have, I lost track. Is there one in there? Let me actually hit play and no, we'll see. Not. I'll tell you guys all what your job is. Okay. Here's what your job is going to be. What I want you to do, you're going to see a sequence of dogs who are actually dog-dog aggressive dogs. These are not dogs who are aggressive to UPS man and meter readers and, and um, animal control officers. These are dogs who are dog-dog aggressive. Again, it doesn't matter because they give, dog, they give off the same signals to humans as they do to dogs. Thank heavens, because we'd never be able to sort it out if there were two sets of them. So what I want you to do is I want you to record what you see. And you're going to see one dog after another reacting to other dogs. None of these, by the way, you're not going to see like, you know, um, huge amounts. You're not going to see Mandy. You're not going to see huge amounts of teeth and growling and snarling. Because a lot of these dogs have actually been under treatment. You're going to see modified versions of this. All right? So we're just going to go through a couple of sequences. You ready? All right. You don't need audio? Um, That's what I call the lock and load look, by the way. Yeah, that's the lock and load look. She just saw another dog. So write down what you're seeing. OK, I'm going to pause it right there. She was pretty easy, right? Because she was consistent, and she did the same thing over and over and over again, right? Um, and we'll go back and we'll talk about each one. We're going to do a couple in a row. OK. Um, let's see. You know, could you turn the audio up a little bit on this one, if you wouldn't mind? I think that would be helpful. OK. This dog actually, just FYI, um, is actually watching the dog you just saw approach her. This is a little cattle dog. And she's watching the lock and load border collie um, walk up to her. And you might want to turn it down a little bit so it's not quite so loud. <laughs> Hi, Lassie. Okay. Now the border collie is starting to approach. dog who has some emotional arousal issues. <laughs> How fluid is this dog? Oh. <laughs> okay. If you were able to write down everything that just happened in the last second, you're a better person than I. <laughs> and this is, this is just a reminder of how much happens really fast. And, it's, and it, again, I don't want to sort of beat a dead horse here, but it's a reminder of why going over the stuff over and over and over is really helpful because you just need to just have this stuff so nailed that you don't have to think about it anymore. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit more, and then we're going to go back and we're going to um, play it again, and um, we'll get comments from the audience. So there's, there's a lot for you to do now. This is FES, Adolescent Standard Poodle. I'm having Luke just walk by. It's okay, Lassie. Yep. It's a dog who was thrown out of intermediate class because this is what he did the entire hour. When I asked the owner on a scale of 0 to 10 how aroused this dog was, she said, it's about a 2 based on what it normally did. 
And it's not a gentle leader, by the way. Comes a boxer. This is Eli, one of our clients, who'd actually already been in some classes. Some feisty fight. Oh, he's Christ. Watch the corgi. <laughs> Okay, now we're in a shelter. Do you turn it down a little bit? Hello, who are you? Hello. Hello, who are you? Hello, who are you? Hello. Be sure to be writing down everything that's happening now. Hello, who are you? Watch that look. Oh, I saw that look too! <laughs> okay. We're going to rewind. Um, who wants to talk about this dog? Anybody want to talk about this dog? Oh, no. But this one's really easy. If you're going to do the talking, do it now. Because you can look really good. Because nothing else happens but this. Right? Just raise your hand. All right. Okay, the first thing I notice is the mouth is open. Mouth is open. Good. I don't think so. Doesn't sound. Ooh. Good girl, honey. There we go. Mouth's open. It's got a direct stare at what he's looking at. Good, direct, unwavering stare, right? Very alert. Uh, ears forward a little bit there. Turn the sound down, Alta. And, and did you see? A little bit of posturing there with the right leg, you know, up. Yeah, good for you forward. for noticing that freeze. And did you see that? That, um, that, when I said that, the dog started to lunge forward and then checked herself. That was actually a huge, a huge victory from our Feisty Fido class. Is that what this dog has done in the past is if she was off leash, which obviously she wasn't after two incidents, um, she would simply, without any vocalization, without a growl or a word of warning, she would run straight at another dog like a missile, grab them and not let go. Um, just exactly what we were talking about. Absolutely serious. I'm not communicating. I'm not negotiating. I'm, I just want to hurt you. That's all. Um, and she redirected in class. She turned and bit her owner's leg badly when she was restricted from going after another dog. So this is actually what you just saw is huge progress. And what I wanted to, did you write down that little lunge stop? Did you write it down? Good for you for saying you didn't if you didn't. But it was huge. You saw it again, right? It was really big. So if you wrote it down, yay for you. If you didn't write it down, you will next time, right? That was a big action. OK, let's go to the next dog. Next dog. We'll fast forward a little bit here. And um, who, while we're getting to some, some of the interesting stuff, who wants to talk about this little cattle dog? All right. I can't. I'm so sorry. Who wants to talk about the catalog? Oh, that's a good one, too. <laughs> Who wants to talk about the catalog? <coughs> Somebody? Yep, there we go. OK, just, just start. What do you see? What did you see with this behavioral stew? Oh, in, in the very beginning, the <coughs> dog was agitated. High it arousal. Like, it didn't like being looked at. It, didn't, it was begging its owner, please get me out of this situation. No, and, was, and, and I. Because he was jumping at the owner, and he was saying, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And, and let me and stop. Beca didn't do anything to tell the dog to because I told her not to. to. <laughs> so the dog is in that stage of saying, now I have to defend myself against okay. an animal. Okay. And, and let me stop you there because some of the things that she said are really, really important. And I loved her observation that the dog initially was sort of starting to elicit something from the owner. The owner had been instructed, don't do anything. Don't tell your dog to do anything. Just be a post. 
And so you're absolutely right that the dog's behavior was oriented towards the human. The one thing I would caution you about is making attributions about what the dog was thinking when, it, when, when he or she did it. Now, I've got to tell you, I'm not a strict radical behaviorist. Strict radical behaviorists argue that you can never know what's inside the brain of, of an animal. Um, all you can ever do is just look at behavior. Um, I'm always speculating what's going on inside the mind of a dog. My next book is going to be what's going on inside the mind of a dog compared to what's going on inside the mind of a human. The whole thing is going to be speculation because we don't know. I just think it's valuable to speculate. You're always, your speculations will be best if you start with objective descriptions of what you saw. So one of the things, and, and you were great to mention that the dog was starting to orient a lot towards, um, towards the owner. Um, and so when somebody says the dog is getting upset, I will say, what is the dog doing that makes you say he's getting upset? Okay. So your observations are really good. Um, I'll just, I'm just going to just sort of wrap up with this dog because I don't want to run out of time too much. Um, is, well, well, actually, let me just go back to you. When she started, dog started reacting, what was the first thing that made you think there was going to be a switch in behavior? The high-pitched the high, the high voice, the going, the going forward, the stop, panting, stop, panting, stop, panting, stop. Yeah, good. So the, the, there was this high-pitched, high arousal. Remember we talked about pitch? This dog has a lot of emotional control issues. High arousal, high-pitched barking. Um, a lot of motor activity, sort of directed in all kinds of directions. This dog basically, as I call her, my behavioral soup dog. Um, what about the tail? What was the tail doing? And you guys asked yourself this question. What did you write down? Once the dog started reacting to the other dog, what did you write down about the tail? Tail went down. Tail went down. And then it went up. And then it went sideways. And then it went around. And then it went to the side. The tail was like everywhere. That dog's tail goes, um, oh, I'm on Festa. That dog tails go, tail, look, yeah. look. Circle wag, up, down, lateral, up, down. The tail is absolutely everywhere. And what that suggests to me is that this is a dog who's got a lot of conflict, a lot of ambivalence inside. And I know the dog, and I can tell you that's exactly what fits with her. Very high um, arousal level, no frustration control, um, and um, very little sort of emotional control. Um, who wrote down that she was, had piloerection? How many people wrote that down? Did you see it though? Did you yes. see it? Yes. Good. Did you see the closed jaw, right? Yes. Pant, 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 closed jaw. You all saw that. Yes. Um, and, and one of the things to notice on this dog is that the tail went every which way. And it's a really important indicator to me of a dog in a very um, sort of ambivalent situation. Where would you describe her commissure? Not necessarily in this particular, s this, is, this is good because she's not going to tell you. That's a pretty neutral commissure position. Where, where would you say the commissure on this dog tended to go? A lot of forward. There's a lot of forward. See, there's a lot of forward on that dog. This is a dog who has not attacked other dog like the Border Collie has, but she has, um, she needs managing really carefully, and she has started some, what I call, put two dogs in a blender fight, you know, display fights where nobody's really trying to hurt each other, but it scares the heck out of you. Okay, let's just do one more dog. We'll do Fess. See the tail change? Did you note that down? Did you see it when you were watching? As Luke appeared, that dog's tail came up. And so this is not the stiff, silent dog. This is a dog who has no emotional control. I actually feel like the dog was, is physi was physiologically ill, and I sent her to um, a veterinarian Chinese medicine specialist, as a matter of fact. Um, the dog's physiology, look at the coat. I mean, the dog is just totally wrong. <coughs> Where's the tail? Ears are hard. See why I want all dogs to be, you know, designed like <laughs> wolves so I can read them all? Now this, I would expect you didn't have a lot to write down on this. 
And the reason, the reason that that's true, and you can go ahead and um, just turn the video off and turn the lights back on. Um, and by the way, um, Roseanne, we're going to um, work Lassie first, and then we're going to work one of your dogs. So would you go get um, um, Kenai, and ju but just hang out in there. Lassie. There's Lassie. Hi, sweetie. Um, so I was talking about Fest, that standard, that apricot standard poodle. Um, one of the things I just wanted to mention to you about, oh, I know, and I was talking about the boxer, wasn't I? So let me go back to the standard poodle, and I'll go back to the boxer. Um, the standard poodle, I could not get my dogs to get anywhere near that dog. The, in the first scene when you just saw the standard poodle barking, what, I, what was happening out off camera was Luke, my cool hand Luke, who, works, who loves dogs, works dog-dog aggression cases all the time, was being asked off-leash to just walk by that dog about 15 feet away. He did it once. He wouldn't do it again. He's never done that to me. And I honored it completely. Lassie was on a leash, and when she walked by, she started tongue flicking. They were 20 feet away. All of my dogs acted like they didn't want anywhere near this dog. And my take on Fess was that basically the dog was truly what we would call crazy. The dog was in a mental, emotional state that was so, un the dog was unstable. The dog was mentally and emotionally unstable. Um, she actually went, got acupuncture, Chinese herbal medicine from a veterinarian, um, a different dog in a year. It was a completely different dog in a year. Totally stable dog? No. <laughs> no, but no longer crazy. And a dog who was in her classes, went to class, could contain herself, and other dogs didn't act like, I don't want anywhere near you. I think dogs can see psycho in other dogs. Um, Barbara Woodhouse wrote a book called No Bad Dogs. That's a lovely title, and I love her main point. Um, her main point was that it's usually about us, not the dogs. But you know what? There are some dogs out there. I might call them Jeffrey Dahmer dogs. <laughs> This being Wisconsin, and there are some Jeffrey Dahmer dogs out there. Um, so, you're fine. I just need to get to be oh, okay. Oh, yeah, because it won't come out. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to switch to working dogs. And what I'd like to do is do a little bit of work, and then um, we'll see how the time's going. Let me ask you guys. We're going to work dogs, and I'm going to have some of you come and work dogs because we've gone from now we've gone from slides to videos. Now we're going to do it in real time, where I, you know can't go backwards, can't pause it. Um, we're going to, just do, going to do it in real life because that's how you have to deal with it, and it's oh so very different. Are you going to see dogs about to attack somebody? No, <laughs> no. When you're working on stuff like this, you don't start. You know, you don't learn to compete in the Olympics by starting the Olympics, right? We're going to have you work with dogs who aren't problem dogs. Because that's, that's, if you want to be able to influence a dog's behavior and read their signals and understand how to use your voice and your body to communicate with them to influence their behavior, um, you need to start where everybody starts when they're learning a skill, which is at the beginning. So we're going to do this with dogs who are not super aggressive dogs, who are not aggressive dogs, not super aggressive, who are not aggressive dogs. And, and so please don't come up to me and say, you think those were aggressive dogs? I had, I had at seminars, somebody came up to me, he's had an accent, and I love these accents actually, so this is not sort of a cultural diss, this is just reporting ethologically what this sounded like. <laughs> Little lady, you think those were aggressive dogs? Why, I, I, I've had dogs that came flying at me from 60 yards away with nothing but teeth, and they latched into my cheek, and they wouldn't let go until I beat them with a lead pipe. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're not going to do that here. We're, I'm, the, I'm the general slave. We're the basics lady. Randy's going to, like, you know, curl your blood with videotapes of real case studies, you know, Oh, I shouldn't say that. It's a horrible setup. Randy's gonna, Randy has some really fascinating case studies of people who are dealing with the advanced model dogs. All right? But one of, one of the things that I can do for you is, is to repeat to you, sort of get you know, into your heads in a benevolent, friendly way, is if you want to be the advanced model dog trainer, you need to start at the basics. You need to start at the beginning. And one of the things I found in dog trainings, everybody wants to go from step one to step 25. 
And, you know, it happens in, in, with professional dog trainers, it happens with dog handlers, and it happens with pet dog owners. Everybody wants to skip the middle steps. And it's the middle steps where you need to spend the most time. Is I want to illustrate just up here on the stage this whole concept of forward and back. And first we're going to do it with little butter dog here. I named her, I named her Lassie for a reason. Um, she's the dog that you don't actually ever have to train to get to do what you want. I, got, I didn't raise her from a puppy. Um, I got her when she was a year old. And the night, day after I got her, she, I let her run up the hill behind my house. And I knew she was running after my other dogs. They went after a rabbit. She chased after them. I'd had this dog. I got her 11 o'clock that night. It was 7 o'clock the next morning. I had no relationship with this dog. She was running up the hill at a dead run. Um, I, for reasons I don't understand, I called her name, which at that time was Cassie. For reasons I don't know, I called her name. She stopped in mid-dead run, turned around, and came back to me and said, I guess I'm not going to be finding you up. I guess I'm not the foster home. <laughs> I guess I'm the real home. <laughs> I called the breeder. I said, the dog I was fostering for you, I'm keeping her. Um, most dogs aren't like that. But so we're starting with the easiest. And what I want to show you, last girl. Hi, sweetie. Hi, darling. I didn't talk about that too much. But there is a change when dogs' eyes go from being soft to looking hard and cold. I don't know exactly what it is that changes. Suspect, you know what nystagmus is? There's a little... Your eyeball is actually going back and forth unbelievably fast, unbelievably small amount all the time. If you sort of think about it, it sort of drives you crazy. <laughs> I sort of tend to want a seizure when I think about it. But it's, what it's doing is it's triangulating. They're always moving back and forth so your brain can always you know, triangulate to, to, um, to give you information about where things are. And my guess is, and I don't know, it's just a guess, is that when dogs' eyes go hard, is a strong physiological change and, and that actually stops for a microsecond or something. That's a complete guess. I have no idea. Um, maybe me, Randy and I can talk about this. You don't need, we don't know. We, we don't know, but boy do we know what it looks like when we see it. Um, the reason I brought that up is Lassie's eyes had never gone hard in their life, but they have a I am not happy look to them that has a certain amount of lack of softness in them. And she's got it right now. So if you want to, she's not, she's not been enjoying this morning. Um, she's, enjoy she's enjoyed it up till the yelling um, and the growling, and now she's stressed out about it. So if you want to get some real subtle eye signals, you can put your face right up to hers, and it'll be okay in this circumstance. But what I'm going to, Lassie, what I'm going to do is illustrate with her, and then dogs I've never met, and I'm going to start, and then you guys are going to do it. The whole forward-back concept and how much power you have if you get the concept that you can control a dog's behavior tremendous amount of the time by controlling the space around the dog. Now, am I saying that you're, you know, in a yard and there's three, you know, pit rock crosses running at you, that you should be like, oh, wow, I remember this cool thing that Trisha taught me. <laughs> no. No. This is when you go, and where's the stick, you know? This is when you, this is when you talk tools, okay? But, there are going to be situations in which there's much more gray area and you're going to need to finesse things. Let's see. Border Collies taught me that the way they control sheep is by taking the space around sheep. They very rarely touch them. They don't bark at them and they almost never touch them. What they do is they control the space around them. And it was by watching them that I realized you can control an animal without touching them. And dog owners don't know that because they're always grabbing at their collar. Right? And then you get dogs to get, don't grab my collar again. Um, dog owners are always grabbing at their collar. But if you can control the space around a dog, you can control a dog. And you don't, it's not that hard to do because dogs read these ethologically relevant signals of where your body shifts. Now, is this magic? You know, can you control everything an eight-month-old field-bred Labrador does, you know, by not touching it? No. <laughs> but, but it's another tool in your, your tool belt. Lassie. I'm moving back, I move forward. I haven't trained her to do anything to that. She's reacting to my move forward. What did she do when I rocked forward? She stopped and she sat. I see. You run into them, they stop too. So I'm moving away from her. I'm moving towards her. I'm moving away from her. I'm moving towards her. This is not trained. This is not trained. Now, she's a very, this is, this is butter dog, right? 
This is a really easy, easy dog to work with. Um, and so, well, hi, sweetie. She said, well, <laughs> do I get, you have a bait bag on. I never wear these at home. She says, we're on a stage, you have a bait bag. <laughs> do you need to work for it? One of the things, speaking of this, that I like to teach my own dogs, you'll never use this out in the field, but a really, really useful signal, I believe, is to teach a dog to back up in space. Because I have it in my brain that dogs are all about space. They're very space conscious. Who's using what space? So they're taking space or they're giving it up. And my, my correction for a dog to do something wrong or one of the ways I diffuse tension is, to, is with a verbal, quiet verbal signal, teach a dog to back up. So I just, she, this is trained. Lassie, get off. Good girl, get off. Get off. Lie down. Good girl. Lassie, that's it. Lie down. Well, I don't care if you sit. I don't care if they sit or, or lie down, by the way. If you compete in obedience, it's huge. But to me, unless you teach it, what dogs think sit and lie down means is go down towards the ground. And so I literally make no distinction. Um, but you might need to. Um, so forward, backwards, forward, backwards. Who wants to play with Lassie? It'll never get easier. <laughs> Anybody want to play with Lassie? Oh, come play with Lassie. You can charge the big bucks for your screen appearance, you realize. <laughs> so here's all I want you to do. And, and you know, I'm going to sort of fade away. And I'm, I'm going to give her some treats only because otherwise she's not going to pay attention to you. Okay. So I don't want Thanks. you to... Thanks. I appreciate I don't, your confidence. I don't, no. <laughs> I, don't think of it that way. <laughs> think of it as me trying to set you up to win. I'm on your side, honest, I am. <laughs> I just have a lot of this. <laughs> looks really good. Yeah. Anybody hungry? Um, okay. So all I want, don't give that to her, all right? All I want you to do is, is let her, she knows she has it now. And all I want you to do is walk away. And she might not go with you, and you can just sort of tap your leg to help her because she doesn't know you so well. Um, and then I want you to turn and stop. And we're just going to see how she reacts to you. Bye, baby. And turn. She does want to treat. <laughs> now, let, now so, so what's happening is that Lassie's stopping because she's, because she's turning. <laughs> Go ahead, give her one. Oh, good, that's fine. So, so we're going to try, now we're going to try something a little harder this time. You stay right where you are. I'm glad you gave Lassie a treat. What I'm going to do is, um, is I'm going to bring Lassie over here. And then I want you to just sort of bend down like you're calling her and slap your leg. You can even wave the treats. But then I want you to do something different. When she gets just, just right to here, I want you to go like that, like a traffic cop. OK? okay? Hi, sweetie. Hi, darling. OK, call her. Lassie, come here. Now stop her. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> no, you know, one of the things, I actually did think she'd stop. But you know what? One of the things I love about working dogs on stage, you can't lose. You can't, you can't lose because you always can learn something. What, so what we're going to do now is we're going to see, well, you know, that's interesting. I thought she would stop. Um, one of the things to know is that Lassie is extremely well socialized and she adores people. And, and she works, you know, the crowd, all, I'm sorry, sweetie, she works the crowd all the time. So here's, here's what I'd like to try. And since that didn't work, what do you think she should do to make it work? So we had an eye contact idea, we had a walk forward faster, um, use a voice. Um, so let's, let's experiment. Let's see what works, because you know what? The dogs in the yard aren't going to stop either, are they? <laughs> right? They're not. Um, and, and that's the point of this, is I want you to start feeling confident that sometimes you can, you can know that you can, you can have an influence on a dog's behavior um, by using your body. And I'm going to talk in a minute um, 
about when to do this, because there are times you would never want to do this, okay? Um, she said, what if I just change the expression on my face? So here's what I want you to do now. Without, and we're just going to leave it up to you, without scaring my dog, I want you to do whatever you think you need to do to stop her coming towards you. Remember, this is butter dog. You know, this is a really easy dog to influence. Okay, so I want you to try doing whatever you think you need to do without terrorizing my dog to stop her. Okay. And again, it can't, nothing can go wrong because we'll learn something. Lassie, come here, sweetie. Hi, honey. Hi, sweetie. Are you ready? Ready. Okay, so you might want to just sort of wave the treats, do something that without actually calling her gets her to come over. Beth, would you just go stand behind her? Apparently I'm not very threatening. <laughs> Beth, and, and, and you know what? I wouldn't have stopped either. I wouldn't have. And, and let's speculate as to why. Here, and here's one thought, and I might be wrong, but here's my hypothesis. And, and, and I'll ask you, let me start that by asking you to describe her posture. Tell me, I'm, I'm, I am now your, your, your piece of clay, all right? I'm, so you tell me what posture she was in trying to stop. What do I do? Okay, I go forward. Arms up. Is that right? Step forward. Are my arms like this? Is this right? Up. Oh, am I getting closer? Okay, now I want you to look, where is my chest? Where's my torso? It's back. Remember when I talked about dogs are always interested not in your arms or your forepaws, but your shoulders and your torso. What if, Lassie, you tried more like that? Now, is that going to work? I don't know. <laughs> because the first one was more like play folks. Good point. Steve make a great point. Was this even a play bow? Yeah. You know? Remember your paws have very little effect. Your dogs aren't watching your paws that much. When you put your paw over to touch them when they don't want to be touched, they'll snap at it, they'll bite it. But in terms of communicating to each other, they don't use their paws that much. You know, they use them in play and they use them to start a mount, but they don't use them in greetings. Lassie, stop. Girl, good girl. Now, I never do that with her. So she's trained to listen to me. So there is training in that sense. Um, but I've never done that to her. She said, you're more fun. OK, so let's see if you can stop Butter Dog. OK, and maybe if we told her that actually Lassie actually bites in this context. Maybe that would. So what I want you to try is I want, is I want you to think of not this, but this and take the space, okay. all right? Lassie. Hi, sweetie. OK. Beth, you want to just sort of look interesting? <laughs> Stop her. Oh, she's going to kill you. There, there she got, what did she get? She got a pause. She got, that was better. That was better. And I actually, I was watching Lassie. I wasn't watching her. Who was watching which one? Who was watching her? Were you watching her? What did she do differently? I was watching the dog too. What did she do differently? She must have done better. Yeah, yeah. You use more of the center of your body. And keep in mind that when you're communicating with a dog, that's what they're paying attention to. Now, when are you going to use this? Um, well, let's actually, let's do it with another dog. Let's, let's put Lassie on the leash. And I'm going to send Lassie to, to Uncle Brandy. Thank you to, for the other oh, Yes, you can. And thank you. She deserves, I think, a very big round of applause. That's <laughs> really um, So you want to bring in Roseanne has been very kind. She's brought tons of dogs. We'll never have time to use all of them. Bless her heart. Why don't you just come right up on the stage. I actually saw Kenai not with a problem that she had in relation to another dog and told Roseanne, anytime you don't want the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and she's 10 now and I'm still waiting. Hi, sweetie. And I'm still waiting too. Hi, darling. Hi, darling. How are you? How are you? Hi, sweetie. I'm just going to 
um, just hang out with her for a minute. One of the tough things about doing seminars with dog demos, most people don't do them. Um, very few people in my position do this, by the way. And, and there's a good reason for that. Um, it's because, it's, because it's, it's the perfect illustration of the fact that dogs were put on this earth to humiliate humans. Um, <laughs> that, that's my absolute true belief. <laughs> and when, when you have demo dogs on stage, you never know what's going to happen. You just never know what's going to happen. But you know what? You never know what's going to happen in the yard either when you're reading the meter. And that's why I like to do it. Because you just have to roll with whatever happens. And it might not, not be what you planned, you know, but there's still something to learn from it. One of the things that's hard about it, though, is that you're communicating with two different bodies, the dog and the audience. And that means your communication is really flawed. One of the problems that you guys probably have sometimes is you're communicating with an owner and a dog. And one of the best pieces of information you can get from this morning is do everything you can to do one at a time. Do, tr don't try to talk to both of them at the same time if you possibly can. Um, because it just diffuses your energy. Hi, sweetie. Hi, Tootie. So I'm going to say hi to Kenai. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little forward back stuff. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Keep in mind that, that, that when dog, dogs want to come to you when you move away. So you've probably already been told if a dog goes after you, you're, it, it, it's a very rare circumstance where you should start running away, right? It's a very, very rare circumstance where you should run away from a dog who's coming at you. Very, very rare because they're probably faster than you are. Um, when you're like this, you are not in a position to protect yourself. Hopefully, I mean, basically, if I was in your position, I would never get out of the truck without something in my hand. Ever, 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 ever. I get out of my car with a bag, and I hold the bag in front of me before the door's opened. Um, and it's like, bite the bag first. Um, but, but besides that, when you move away from a dog, dogs want to go the way you're going. Dogs, um, when you call a dog to come, Kina, come. Oh, sweetie, you don't like the stage. Don't like the stage. Uh-oh, getting nervous. Kina, come on, sweetie. You see now, why do I say this dog's getting nervous? Oh, because she's trying to get off the stage. <laughs> How hard was that, right? That wasn't subtle. They're not always subtle. She's just, shh, I don't like where her ears are. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. So I'm just going to hang up for a minute. Do you notice the rate of um, respiration? Shh, good girl. Hi, honey. Oh, you're a good girl. Everything is happening a little herky-jerky. One of the things, one of the ways you can tell when a dog starts getting tense is when they start snatching at the treats. You know, they just sort of, it's, everything's real jerky. And she's getting real jerky, not as in being a jerk, but is, everything's moving sort of extra fast. Don't you think she's getting nervous? Hi, sweetie. Are you getting nervous up here? Oh, there's mama. There's mama. Yes, you are. Now, one of the things I promised Roseanne is that we would not set any dog back at all. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. And this is a lovely dog. She loves everybody. She has no issues with people at all. She's very nervous up here. And I'm thinking we should get the puppy because I think she's nervous and neither would you scare her. You know, we don't. So I'll just talk a little bit. She's going to switch and get a puppy who hopefully is. We did have a question in the back. Oh, OK. And that'd be a great time to answer a question. Um, somebody had a question. Should we get the microphone? Do we still have that going, George? Or, or should I just repeat the question? Why don't I do that? Why don't you be very brief? Oh, here we go. Somebody's bringing up a written question. Thank you. Good job. So before I read this, did everybody's before I said anything and be be honest, how many of you started thinking, that dog's starting to get nervous? Good. Good for you. Good for you. And of course, jumping off the stage was obvious. Um, I didn't notice her increased respiration until she did that. But you know, if I had been attending to the dog, I should have at least. I don't, can't tell you. I promise you I would have, but I should have. OK. I have a four and a half month old collie pup who has become aggressively protective of her boy, meaning boy, human child of a 12-year-old boy only towards other dogs. Do I have problems brewing? Do I have a problem brewing? Oh, yes. That's my answer. No. <laughs> 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 oh, 
and and but this is a, this is a great issue to talk about. Um, and I can't give it all the time that it deserves. But the first thing I want to say, I want to repeat this question. I have a four and a half month old collie pup who has become aggressively protective of my 12 year old boy. First thing I want to say is I, I wouldn't use those words. I doubt that the dog is actually motivated by feeling as though your child is under threat from other dogs. My guess is it's more possessive aggression. Stay away from him. And I have all these owners who say, well, my dog is really protective. She, you know, she protects me. She won't let anybody near me. Um, and, and I think what the dog is saying, stay away from her. I have my bone. You can't have that. I have my dog bed. You can't have that. But there's only one human in the world who rubs my belly, lets me sleep in the bed, buys me dog bones, buys me dog beds, takes me to canine chiropractor, takes me to fly ball, talks baby talk to me, and pets me whenever I demand it. And you can't have her. I'm not sharing. You know, I think that's what it is. So that's my guess. I would, uh, the, the quick answer, which is not, it's very quick, is that the, the um, Feeling Outnumbered booklet talks about um, dealing with, with dogs who are, possessive um, and, and therefore aggressive to other dogs. Um, and, and, and so that's what I would do. There are exercises where you can condition the dog. The sort of the simple version is you put a dog on a sit-stay, the problem dog, you sit and stay. You, you bring another dog over to your child. I, I would do this with you first, not the child. Keep the child out of it, too dangerous. Um, but the dog over here, who's the problem dog, learns that if I sit and stay and I'm patient and polite, good things happen. So you'll be like, sit, stay, hi, sweetie, I love you, treat. Hi, sweetie, I just love you. You're the sweetest little dog, treat. So what problem dog over here is learning, I get good things from her when that other dog comes toward her and gets attention. So I'm not losing anything. I'm gaining something when the other dog comes in, OK? OK. Any, um, the little puppy isn't here yet. So while we're waiting, is there another question? Anybody's got so far? Yes, Beth. You were talking about fluid of movement. I was talking about fluid movement. To, to uh, kind of settle things down. Yes, um, as a way of settling, diffusing tension. Yes. When we're doing uh, like dog safety things, uh, teaching children to stand perfectly. Oh, great point. Beth, Beth brought up a great point. When one of the things that children are taught is if a dog comes running at them, they should stand perfectly still, like a tree. Um, I think you should ask that of Randy because because. Because one of the things that Dr. Lockwood does is talk a lot about child safety. Um, I think it's excellent to teach kids not to run. I think it's excellent to teach them to stand still and get their hands out of there. Um, I don't know if it's possible with a young child to get them the distinction of, you know, don't move and but stay sort of loose. You know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, ideally, that's exactly what they would be doing is don't look at the dog, you know. Um, uh, maybe, depending on the age of the child, you could certainly say, and while you're standing there, do everything you can to breathe normally. You know? I think that's perfectly reasonable. Um, well, you know, she just said, can you have them go up on their tiptoes and down? I'd watch the up part, because that could be, like, perceived as a threat. But what you could do is have them to shift their weight back and forth. How would that be? You think that'd be good? Right, right. And, and he said one of the reasons that they advise children to be still is to be boring. Absolutely give the dog nothing to react to. The problem is if they're too still, that's something to react to. So, you know, if the distinction is possible, um, if you can get dogs to, or get dogs, if you can get kids, if they're old enough, to get the distinction between staying still, sort of not giving, come on up. Um, is Lassie loose or is somebody hang on to her? Okay, just hang on to her, thanks. Um, that's a little puppy. Ah, uh, it's, it's a little puppy. Why don't you just pick up? Why don't you just pick up? Oh, hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Hi, By Tristan. Way, and down we go. Dog, if he is available for adoption. Oh, we need a home. But we're going to be home. very picky. We need a home. Fluid, fluid, fluid. Waggy, waggy, waggy. Everything's moving. Oh, 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 oh. We're so happy. Oh, I'm waiting for the shoulders back. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Mom. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Hello. 
this is not a dog who's going to be a real status-seeking dog probably. <laughs> Not with people. By the way, how dogs are with people, whether they're status seeking with people, I have found to not be predictive of whether they're status seeking with other dogs. I am beside myself. <laughs> I am just beside myself. Well, we'll just have a little pause while Trisha just goes into puppy rapture here. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. I'm as cute as cute can be. One on time. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, <laughs> this will this will be really fun actually. I'm going to set myself up a super challenge and again I will remind you dogs are here to humiliate us and you know I just might prove that just very soon. But, but here I have this little wiggle worm right and what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to use what I know about sound and, and behavior to try and influence this dog's behavior. And what I'm going to do, oh we found the mother load. <laughs> Hi Tootie. Oh, this is a wonderful dog. Somebody take this dog home. Um, what I'm going to do is stand up first. Um, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to take my attention off you guys, so I'm not going to talk for a little bit, except to the dog. Um, so what I want you to do is, is watch now. See, now you have two species to watch. It's getting harder and harder, right? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do things, and I want you to watch me and the puppy and just see how much control I can get out of this dog's behavior. And my goal is to use touch as little as possible. That's my goal. And what's the pup's name? Tristan. Tristan. Oh. oh, there's an up. There's an up to the world. I'm so excited, I'm actually spitting the food out. Oh, you know what? I may be doomed because, because he's not actually eating the treats. So what does that tell us? That's a really good important indicator of what? What do we know? It's, it's not a motivator and it's not a motivator because he's at too high an arousal level. One of the side effects of adrenaline, of epinephrine and norepinephrine production, one of the side effects is appetite suppression. And one of the best of ways to evaluate the arousal level of a dog is to offer them a really high quality food. And if they won't touch it, they're too excited. So one of the things you can use is in my office, I'll, I, I, I also write down, wouldn't take treat, took treat 12 minutes in. You know, how long did it take them to calm down enough? Hi, mister. So I'm going to just forget about treats for a minute. And I'm just going to walk around a little bit. Hi. Hi. Cool puppy. Cool puppy. Hi. Hi. Good puppy. Good puppy. Good puppy. Good puppy. Good. I just want to lick your hand. I don't want what's in it. No, I don't. So have you written down all the visual signals this dog has been sending? You gotten it all? You gotten it all? Commish your position, your position. If you have to focus, what are you going to focus on? You've already seen the obvious one, fluid, 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 relaxed body, right? Wagging from the ears back. Commish or relaxed, open mouth, ears back, squinty eyes. Friendly, friendly, friendly dog. Who I can stop just by turning. So that's the power. And I can get to come by going away. Come out here. So if you have a dog coming up to you, you have a tremendous amount of power in the way your um, body is directed and the way your body moves. So I wanted to talk a little bit about when to use this sort of space management, I call it, for, for want of a better term. Um, for, for, first of all, if at all possible, you want to avoid the use of space management. 
the most important thing that I think that I do that I think you can do in a situation where you're confronted with a loose dog and you don't quite know what's going on, there's a dog coming at you, is first of all, always have something in your hand. But second of all, if you, if you see any signs of fear, which can include barking, you might see a lot of teeth. If you see any signs of fear, um, dog's highly aroused, you want to defuse the situation and you want to give the dog, it's like Randy was saying, you want the, the dog with the kids to have nothing to react to. Give the dog nothing to react to. That means you turn sideways, you turn away. I tend to fold my arms. It's just sort of a way of, you know, protecting my left breast. No. <laughs> Three service people inside. They'll say, yes, I get out of my truck 20 feet to the, to the um, door. Oh, the kids must have let the Roddy Shepherd cross out. And so I have rah, 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 rah running at me. Um, so if, if in many circumstances, if you have a dog who is not sort of a lock and load dog, if you have a dog who's giving you signals of ambivalence or signals that they're highly aroused and reactive, one of the best things you can do is to be non-reactive. And I know Dr. Lockwood's going to talk more about this this afternoon. And that includes being sideways, monitoring your breathing, no direct eye contact, no reaching to pet. You don't need to pet any of the dogs you guys see. Dogs don't want to be petted like people want to pet dogs. Petting is more a people thing than it is a dog thing. Um, of course, dogs like massages, but they don't like being petted on the top of the head, which is where most of us pet them. Your owners, they all want you to pet their dog. No, he's fine. Go ahead, pet him. He'll be fine. You know, it's like, well, I have a hand injury <laughs> or something. Let them come to you. Now, if they come up to you, everything's friendly, then I will scratch them under the on the side of the face and under the chin. Um, but if you get a dog who's come up to you and they're barking with an offensive pucker, or worse, they're not. They're just doing that little quiet growl with a commissure forward and an offensive pucker. Everything is forward, everything is confident, high status, and they're challenging you and they're threatening you. So those forward intention movements, ears up, offensive pucker, round eyes, then then is when you need to be conscious that you probably, you might have to take control of that situation. And that's the time to breathe in, gather up your energy. Um, I had a Roddy come at me who I, my belief is, is the Roddy was, was intending, certainly to get me off the beach. That was absolute without question. And I couldn't get off the beach without going farther into his territory. Um, and so, so the way I handled it is I stayed side. I still didn't do this direct confrontation. I stayed sideways, but I said, Whoa! low and quick, low and quick. Whoa! And the dog startled and paused. And that gave me a second to say, sit. And he went, and half the dogs in the world will do this. Oh, OK. <laughs> I can do that. You just, you just, you surprise them. Um, does this little dog know Sip? This little puppy? We're not Sip. And do your Kitas know Sip? Yes. You know, we, we will, and we didn't get a second break. Are you guys okay? Are you all right? You got another 15 minutes in you without like, please let me get back to the truck. <laughs> <You know? laughs> or the restroom or something. Are you guys all right? Okay. Okay, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit more, do a little bit of stuff with the puppy, and then we'll bring your, let's just, let's just skip to the Akitas. Um, oh, oh, she, oh, no, don't, no, no, stay right there as long as we have a little Esky in here. And he's being wonderful. Um, go ahead and just come up and sort of hang up, hang out up here. Um, hang up, hang out. Um, hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. What, what, and just, just sort of hang out right over there. What, what I want to show you is, say you have a dog who's coming at you, um, and you need to stop the dog. You can't run away. The dog is serious. Um, um, you may have already tried sort of being non-reactive. One of the things that is really useful to be comfortable doing, working first with friendly dogs who are not a problem, is again, using this forward motion, stopping them, and then learning to do without having to think about it. You have to master it like you know boot camp if you're a Marine, like you did in police officer training. You have to master these things because you don't have time to talk about it. Is to do a huge, clear sit signal that involves, well, go puppy. Did you want that? I did. Oh, you have stuff in your hands. 
I got it. So, hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Can I just take this off? Sure. Is there any problem? Hi, sweetie. If the little puppy starts sort of screaming down the hall, somebody, somebody help me. Hi, sweetie. Hi, little sweetie. So this puppy knows nothing, right? Sit. Good puppy. All right, the puppy knows nothing. What just happened? He stopped and sat. Now this is a very responsive little puppy. This dog, this dog has got to get a really good home. Yes, you do. Oh, that's my leash. I could chew on that. Stop, but I'm going to go back to the leash. Good puppy. Why did that puppy sit? The puppy sat because his, her, his, her, how many? Yeah. Yeah, it's a him because his, <laughs> sorry, honey, <laughs> because, because, well, sometimes you just need direct evidence, you know? Um, I only do that to dogs, I promise. <laughs> I promise. On a, on a good day, anyway. He's sitting because what I'm doing is, first of all, I stop him. And I'm moving my hand in such a way that makes his chin go up. You probably, all you dog trainers know about lure reward training, where you lure their chin up. When their chin goes up, their butt goes down. And you can do it to yourself. Get down on your hands and knees and keep looking up, and you eventually have to put your butt down. So this puppy doesn't, she just said, I've never met the puppy before. I've never met this puppy. Um, <laughs> Um, and he doesn't really know sit, but I'm acting in a way to facilitate it. Does anybody want to come try? Oh, sure. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. So you need to be loaded for bear. Or puppies. Okie dokie. So let, give him just a f couple of freebies so he goes like, oh, you're nice too. You're nice too. You do know that you have to take the puppy home with you? <laughs> Is that clear? OK, so now walk away, and then I want you to s practice stopping. That's OK. If you get, oh, yes, I'm a nice one, too. Good. 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 And you got a nice stop. And now try practicing just doing, you didn't even need it, but practice the stop and then the sweep. Stop. And what happened? What, what happened to her? She lost her balance, which happens, and her body racked backward. What did the dog do? Walked right past. See how much, can, she's not touching the dog, but everything she does affects the dog. Try it again. Stop. Whoop. Lost attention. Stop. Stop. Sweep. Good. Good job. Good job. And and you're you're doing really good and what you're fighting is the fact that his attention is is um, in many different places besides you. But one of the things that, that could have made that go, you, you got it done and it was good, but just to refine it, is if you'd done things faster with le less lag time, stop, sweep. So it's stop, sweep, just a little faster. Then when you're moving, you know, moving gets their attention. Hi, Tootie. Hi, sweetie. Hi, mister. Good boy. Snappy, just real snappy, OK? Give it a try. Good. <laughs> well, you had it, and I screwed it up by saying good. One more time. You're doing really great. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's starting to learn this, right? He anticipated. Good puppy. Good puppy. OK. OK, let's, let, why don't you take the puppy back? Unless somebody wants to take him right now. No, there's an application you need to fill out. Okay, you need to be careful about this. Okay. 
Okay, two pints of blood. Okay, we have, um, we're going to take the puppy off, and we have Joshua. How many of you have met Air American Eskimos um, in, in your job? <laughs> How many of you have noticed that they all bark on occasion? <laughs> in, all the time, she says. Um, and again, you know, hey, sweetie, we don't want to be breedist here. Josh, you might not. Why don't you come up and hang out? Um, hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. Now, Josh is a major. Josh, oh, now did you just see what's happening? I'm just going to stop what I was saying, and I'm going to deal with what just happened. I just squatted down. I don't know if you can see, but I squatted down and extended my hand, and I moved forward the little spit, and he backed up. And he backed up three quarters of an inch, except it was a really important three quarters of an inch. I want the treats, but I don't know about you yet. Um, this is the dog who will bark like crazy if you come to the house, right? Oh, yeah. Um, but he's not at home. He's not on territory. Now, based on his behavior, what would you say about his general arousal level? Very, very jerky, right? High motor activity, but not fluid and relaxed. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Does anybody here have a hat and sunglasses? Does anybody here happen to have any sunglasses with them? Does anybody here happen to have a hat? Somebody's got sunglasses? And do I have a guy who's big and tall with a lot of facial hair? George. Oh, George. Oh, and George has a hat, and he has sunglasses. But I'm not big and tall. Well, you're, you're, you know, but you know, there's a lot of guy to George here. Now, I have no idea what will happen here. So again, reminding us that nothing might happen virtually whatsoever. What I want you to watch and see if, is don't do anything yet, is if he acts differently. And why don't we'll probably do the greeting right down here um, so that this isn't in the way. If you can't see what happens down here, then get up and move so you can. Because what we're going to do is we're going to have two different people come up and greet the little Esky. One is going to be a small, short woman with no hat and no sunglasses. And then the other is going to be George. Guy, hat, sunglasses, OK? And we might see absolutely no difference whatsoever, but your job is to figure out if we do. <coughs> the fact that he's off territory, this is a highly territorial breed, in my opinion. Um, dogs act very, very differently off territory. Snatchy, snatchy, snatchy. He's taking treats, but he's not relaxed. Hi. His mouth is open. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself, honey. Don't hurt yourself. So I ow. So I need I need that um that relatively short um woman with no hat and no sunglasses. Um 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 <laughs> um do I have anybody volunteering who fits that? Oh good. Okay, you're great. Um, can you see if you put your glasses in your pocket? Mm -hmm. Okay. So all I, all I want you to do is when you come up on the stage is I want you to just come up and I want you to just come up sideways and I want you to squat down sideways and extend your hand and take a treat. And then we're going to have George basically do the opposite. George is going to walk straight up to the dog um, and you're going to reach over and try to pet his head. He won't bite George, will he? I strongly doubt it. We strongly doubt be it. behind me by that time. He'll be, he'll be, <laughs> remember what I said? <laughs> but I asked him, isn't I? He's so what we're going to do, and that's important to know, he's never bitten anybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be standing right beside George, and I'm going to tell, George knows dogs, by the way, really, really well. The Towsers know dogs really well. Um, so I'm not going to ask him to just slap his hand on top of the dog's head, because it doesn't matter if we're all standing right here. We all know dogs are faster than people, right? And how often do they say, it's OK, I'm right here. And I say, well, good, then you can stop the bleeding because, <laughs> you know, because that's all you're going to be able to do because their reaction time is five to nine times faster than yours is. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> A dog pretty happy to interact with this woman, I would say. Careful of the stage. Don't let him fall off like that. So, so yeah, I was careful of the stage. That's one of those useless 
pieces of, you know, I'm trying to learn to get better about back up versus just careful, you know. I love the watch out. <laughs> what information does that convey, you know? Watch out. I love that. And I've done that. I'm trying to get better about specific, clear, back up. Um, okay. So are you ready? Ready. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, thank you, sweetie. <laughs> I'll slip you the 20. My American Eskimo. Oh, you got, they have an American Eskimo on their card. Hey, sweetie. See? See? Okay, now let's try another experiment. I want you to, to go down, and I want you to take off your hat and off your sunglasses, and then I'm going to have you come up and just squat down and extend your hand with a treat in it and look away, all right? All I'm trying to illustrate now is the importance of not just how you move around a dog, but how a dog reads your visual signals. And those are, and included in those is what you have on your body. Sideways, down, good. Don't pet over the head. Yep. Oh, Joshua. Okay. Okay, everybody move back this way. Back up. Okay. So, what was different? What was different about what he did? What was different, and, and, and I'll just say it, um, what was different about what he did was he didn't have on the hat, he didn't have on the sunglasses. Big difference in the dog's behavior, right? Still got the dog to bark. Did George come sideways? No. He came straight on and right towards the dog, and he still got a bark, but was it as a high arousal bark? No. One of the things to know about sunglasses is that, is that big, remember round eyes? They're the biggest, roundest eyes in the world. So when you work outside and you walk into somebody's yard with your cap and your sunglasses on, you are a huge trigger right there. Cool Hand Luke, those of you who know the radio show, who know me, um, know that, that I have a border collie, it's Lassie's father, Cool Hand Luke, he's like Wonder Dog, you know, he's my soulmate dog. He's not allowed to die ever, it's just not going to happen. Um, loves everybody, is, was one of the most stable, friendly dogs I know. He's 13, he goes everywhere, he goes absolutely everywhere. He's never, never been in a problem in his life. I was doing a live radio show, the dog is lying underneath me and Larry Mueller, we're doing Calling All Pets Live. He's underneath me, and we're talking on mic, live on the radio, and both of us hear, bah, rah, 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 rah. Luke lifts my chair, you know, like I raised, Larry raised just because he was so surprised, um, and I turn, I'm like, what the, except I had to stop because I was on the radio, and, and I turned, and there was a workman who had been working on his carpentry, and he had those knee pads on, those big, round, black big knee pads, nailed it. Two big eyes. This guy had two big, black, round knee pads on. And Luke turned and saw the biggest, roundest eyes in the world, <laughs> right at head level, and went, bah, rah, 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 rah. Ethologists call those supernormal sign stimuli. And all it means is it's a relevant signal that's exaggerated and gets an exaggerated response. Sunglasses are huge. Take off your sunglasses, take off your hat. So let's, let's, let's now, he did that. Now let's experiment by having him not approach so directly. All I want you to do now is you're going to stay back here so a pool dog doesn't fall off and just, just down you go. Okay. You're just going to squat down and let him come up. No barks. No treats either, Josh. That's okay. That's okay. Hi, sweetie. There's a treat. Snatchy, snatchy. And he's not a rude, mean dog. He's just so nervous. He's just... Nah, nah, nah. Hi, sweet. Hi, sweetie. Can you... Oh, my goodness. Can you see what happens when I do this? Don't get your hand behind my head. Don't put your hand behind my head. Don't do that. You're looking for the treat. Don't do that. Dogs react a lot like people do. How would you feel if somebody didn't know? Will you bite me if I do it to you? <laughs> does he bite? Roseanne, does he bite? How would you feel if, if somebody you didn't know, and of course, being 
a, you know, a big enough guy that you probably don't spend a lot of your time sort of afraid of other people in the world. But how would you feel if somebody you didn't know walked up to you and went, hey, hi, how are you? Very if, defensive. Very <laughs> defensive. And I want you to know, if I didn't know Steve and I was walking down the street and he came up and did that to me, I would either urinate <laughs> out of total fear or I would go after him. You know, I'd be terrified. Put, just take your own hand, take your own hand out right now, move it towards your face, look at it, and tell me how you feel when it starts to move across the top of your head. How do you feel when it starts disappearing? How many people are saying, oh, sh <laughs> where is it? What's it going to do? You can kill an animal by grabbing them to the back of the neck. And dogs, I think, know that. I don't know if they know that, actually. But I, all I can tell you is they don't like hands coming over here. Um, so if you ever do pet a dog, for heaven, you know, in a situation where you're visiting somebody's dog, for heaven's sakes, don't pet them on top of the head. They don't like it. Pet them on the chin, on the, on the, under the chin, on the side. Okay. So, thank you both very much. We're, we're three minutes over. Can we meet two Akitas, or of Akitas, that Roseanne is bringing in? Um, and here's all I know. One of them is aloof, and one of them is super friendly. Your job is to tell me which, and I don't know. Come on up on the stage, Roseanne. And I'm, we're just going to hang out here, and you're going to just decide. Hi there. Yeah, you should be able to know right now, right? One of the things to look for is what does the dog choose to do when they're free to move around? Are they trying to make affiliative contact with you? Um, are they showing you true signs of friendliness? One of the things that people often get confused about is motor activity. You get a dog who jumps up on you, comes up, jumps up on you, jumps up on you, jumps up on you, and the owner says, oh, he's just so friendly. Except the dog has never actually really looked at your face, tried to make social contact with you. That just being exuberant and rude and goofy is not friendly. So, so who's, who's the, who, who wanted to make contact with me? The big one, right. Who's the big one? That's um, Prancer the male. Boy, I hope we're right. <laughs> oh, I got a sniff. That's good. Hello, Prancer the male. Hello, sweetie. It doesn't, doesn't hurt. <laughs> they don't fight over food, do no, they? No, no. Oh, good. Prancer's the one who analyzes everything before he eats it. Hello. Hello. Hi, sweetie. But, but, here, but they're not making a liar out of you. And, and this is why this is a great demonstration. Remember I talked about this is the advanced seminar. We're looking for subtle things here because that's what's going to keep you from getting bitten. The obvious stuff, you know that. What's going to keep you from being bitten, being on the front lines, is knowing the difference between the subtle stuff. And this was subtle but absolutely screamingly obvious. And what I would argue to you, if I had tried to make up to her, if I had instantly gone to her and said, I want to pet you, she would not have come up to me just a second ago. Do you agree? Yes. That's the level. This is the perfect demonstration because that's the level of difference that you guys need to be able to read. Hi, cuties. Hi, sweeties. Hi, darling. Hi, sweeties. And so what I would suggest is that what does she want right now? She wants food. And I think he was far more interested in having a social relationship with me. Does, does that all make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, if we had more time, we'd play with them more. But you know what? That actually was as good as it could have been. And this is a great time to stop. We're a little over time. You guys have been amazingly patient and wonderful and a great audience. Thank you.